Hoffa Day, and welcome back to the 2022 Social Work Regional Training Conference, hosted by the NASW Guam Chapter. Our next panel is entitled Tomorrow Healing Practices. Joining us for today's panel, we have Susan Uggen, Shmuro Zomate, Hiller, Guam, Wahan, Lou Manglotnia from Rhoda, and Donald Mendiola from Saipan. Thank you all for joining us. Each of our panelists will present for 15 minutes and will be available for question and answer after their presentation. At the end, we will have a moderated discussion with all of our panelists. Our first presenter will be Susan Uggen from Guahan. I'm one of the Zoamtis, and I'm here to uh, thank the, um, this opportunity that uh, we're sharing our uh, uh, professional guidance and uh, information so that we people can come and uh, have the alternative to for healing instead of just the Western world. I'm, my mother is Dolores Tenorio Taitino. She is a Piano familia and thank you to Piano, our great, my great uncle and his son, Madgarito, are the three people that has uh, helped me to uh, find my venture into healing as a Joamsi. Surahano and Surahana is a Spanish word for surgeon. I just wanted to point that out. Zoamti is uh, the right word for us healers. At the age of 19, my great uncle Tankiku Spianu had given me uh, a massage and after he was done, he just turned around and said, Ay. so I reached out and touched him. I said, dispensa salona putiao. And he said, para, para. I'll go next generation. For Zuli STE Vinaha, the Bionayo Todo Nik Vinahaho. And I sat up straight and said, I haven't flapped my wings. Dispensa zu onkusa. And Manazana, after Maggie, then the puppet, then the Bionayo told you, you know, only Amut, Josia, Zon Dana, Zanani, Kanani, and Fan Malik Tauta, Azuda, he taught the name Munisita Vinasi. It has been a real challenge all my life that I can remember doing massages is um, and very challenging. And also to get the armwood, it was nothing for us to just say, Tsulimagi i taut i armwood para i grano maldito or agun pasmo. And we would do it without having to really think too much into it. But, I should have paid attention with it. I tried my best not to because I understand that this kind of work is 24 seven, seven days a week and uh, crisis happen, you don't plan it. So that's what you get. And that's the reason I don't call the people that come to see me uh, clients or patients. I call them my guests because when they walk in the door, guess what you're gonna get? I pray when I come to the centers or to help the people before I do anything to help the guidance because I'm just an instrument. And the knowledge that has been passed on to me from all my um, generations of healers um, it's a dying art and there's hardly anybody out there that's, that's doing this kind of work 
a lot of times it's because they're afraid uh, or they're ashamed or lots of lots of uh, it, lots of things that would come up and um, challenge you why we should uh, perpetuate this because the traditional healing has been around for 4,000 years or so why not pass it on knowledge is uh, a good tool and as a matter of fact we can actually heal ourselves it takes a lot of work but through guidance our lord it can be done the challenges that we ch we have and we face is the person that's coming to you for help has either had trauma um, um, pain that has been there for a long time lots of uh, doctor visits and uh, no results they don't have any kind of uh, they cannot be helped by the western doctors and uh, uh, the mind the body and the soul can be helped through the zoamtis uh, you just have to make sure that you assess the people that come to you so that way you can be able to give them the kind of help that they're asking you for it's um it's a work of wonders for people to just walk in there so um please know that the zoamtis are also willing and able to give you the expertise that they have just help them also uh, and let them know what you are really needing i would recommend breathing a apparatus of the so that way you can help alleviate some of the anxiety between you and that person. And I ask that um, we can share this. I can share this with you. You start with closing your mouth so you can breathe life into you. Let's do this. Ready? Now who sung the patsot mo? How can we patsot mo? How do do who so? How can chest be I? Now cut it up. That will help you to take care of this, so that everything can fall in place once you get a hold of your being, and. Three to five of those sets would be able to make you do what you need to do next. Please help us by helping this land that we are uh, giving up to development. And if you guys are going to be clearing the land, please ask the mayors if the zoamtis would like to have the trees or plants that you guys are bulldozing or just just getting rid of, you know, we maybe have a place that we can um, go and uh, plant it somewhere else. In Gagago, Hamzu, put for board. On Dunkle, Nasidzu's Masti. Ne ma na halum ham vini ito antis para ben na in to no tisha put for what tagi e amut than e mal malasa so on assisti e tauto to meet to end my um my conversation with you i would like for you to know meditation 
communication, water, breathing, especially stretching your ankles, your knees, your hips, your arms, and your neck and your wrists. Clockwise and counterclock. One, two, three. One, two, three. Thank you, Saina. We do have a couple of questions for you in the chat. I can start with the first one. Where do you feel this power to help others comes from? It has to be from in, within. You have to want to help. If the person is wanting to heal themselves, wanting to be uh, well, I always say, let's do it. And I'll find a way to give them the services that they need. And if not, there's other do'amtis that I knock on their doors and, and uh, yeah, uh, give them um, their names and, and numbers so that way they can further their um, uh, progress in helping themselves. Thank you so much, Saina. We have another question. What are some of the practices you use when helping your guests? My expertise is in the massaging. Uh, I, I also do mind, body, and spirit. Um, and counseling. It's uh, very important to hear what they have to say and let them talk. Because a lot of times when we get to talking, we realize that, you know, what we're going through is really um, important that it is addressed. So that way healing can come within. Jesus, Masi, we do have two questions. I'm going to ask them together because uh, they're both in line. So we understand the practices are usually passed down through families. Is there any way to teach someone who is not part of your family? And where can we go or who can we talk to to learn about these practices? Yes, there is a, a way to have somebody learn what, um, what, my, um, what I am doing, which is massaging and uh, the spiritual um, healing with counseling they need to want that and to do this uh, wholeheartedly because it's a uh, 24 hour seven days a week and at any time they can call you to help administer some of the, the healing and uh there's no such thing as, no, I can't do it. But you have to make sure that you uh, meditate and pray. So that way you and your space is also available for them. They also need to reach out to the, the people. I will be suggesting um, a lot of the ones that I know of and you know, anybody that is willing to help. I, I offer to the people that are wanting to learn this trade because it is a, a, a dying art. There used to be so many doamtis out there and uh, healers and I count five of us. I know there's several of them out there, but five is all I really know that's really practicing. Thank you for that. We have a couple of questions coming in, and some of them I'll save for when we talk to all of you together, um, just because they're general questions. Um, but we do have an individual, Mr. Eric Bora, who would like to share as well. I see he put that in the chat, and he does have his um, hand raised, so I'm going to go ahead and also add him to our conversation. So Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to share. Uh, buenas and uh, Susan and Dilu. Molly um, I, I just want to personally share that I've uh, on several occasions and uh, I went up there with uh, a lengai on my over here in my back 
and it was really bad and it, it prevented me from um you know like actually I, I work in front of the computer a lot and and it was so bad i've been to other masseuses here on guam and and i remember that dr zama did a uh a research on on the Zoomti, uh, on guam and and i first first thing i did was i reached out to her because it, it kind of reminded me when i was younger my mom used to go to the Zoomti, but i didn't know what she was doing you know so you know but i know she believed in it she always told me boy believe in it also it's the way you're gonna you know you it's gonna help you and and i reached out to dr zama and she she gave me her number and in two in the first session the pain that i was feeling went away and and then on the second session oh my gosh i was I, it, it hasn't come back since, and it's been a while already. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm meeting to actually meet up with her again, just to, you know, just to get some self-care also on, and, and, and uh, her hands are very strong. Good evening, Susan. You know, and uh, it, it's, I have referred many people now just to go see her because, and I, I talk highly of it because it's helped me. And, and, um, I just wanted to share that I'm, I'm very grateful for you, for the Zoomti here on, on the and the, and the Marianas and uh, just a little personal experience and I wanted to share with everybody just to let you know that it's 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 an awesome it's an awesome gift that these uh, the Zoomtis have and and they're willing to share it with us. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing, Mr. Eric, and sign up. We're just about uh, closing up on our time with you, but uh, once again, she'll be back with us when we talk to all of our panelists at the end. But we're going to go ahead and move the floor to Lou Manglotia, Chimorosa Optu from Rhoda. Buenas para todos samzu. Good morning and half a day. My name is uh, Lourdes Tovis Manglonia. I'm from Rhoda, but uh, I'm staying here in Guam now. I live in Santa Rita <clears throat> and I'm still doing the medicine that my grandmother passed me down. And I am very happy that uh, <clears throat> I learned this um, medicine from my grandmother why that I become a practitioner and a, <clears throat> a healer. Because my grandmother is a medicine woman and she's very <clears throat> religion. She always pray before getting the medicine. She teach me how to uh, collect all the medicine and she teach me how to do the medicine. So from there, I learned the medicine from my grandmother because my grandmother is Anna Manglonia Tovis. So we stay in Saipan that time. And then when I was, uh, from I was uh, two years old, my grandmother <clears throat> teach me how to collect all the medicine. And, to learn the medicine name and how to use the medicine. So from there, I start learning the medicine. And then my grandmother was telling me that um, you have to learn the medicine because that is one of our culture. And you have to go out and heal people because people that don't have uh, money to go to the hospital. You can just make medicine and from there you can just heal the people. So <clears throat> I took that advice from my grandmother and then I, um, I become a medicine woman now. I'm helping a lot of people. And then <clears throat> why that is very important that we learn our medicine because the medicine is from our ancestor and it's passing down to whoever has the medicine. 
So this is from my grandmother. I learned the medicine. I didn't learn from anybody. This medicine that I have, it's from my grandmother. So all the medicine that, what are the, you know, kind of issue that most uh, <clears throat> common to treat them that you see. I see a lot of issue here in Guam. They need medicine and a lot of people, they call me and they ask me. Almost every week I have to make medicine. And the most medicine that I'm making is for the, the flu medicine because now we have those like a fan, they call us a COVID. And that COVID, it's coughing and fever, body ache. So those medicines, I, I cook almost every week and I give to a people. I didn't sell the medicine. I just do it to people who need it. And if I make that medicine, I do a lot of prayers because God is giving me the power, the blessing, and for the person that's going to receive this medicine. So that's why that I am not selling medicine. And that is, I learned from my grandmother because my grandmother told me that don't make the medicine and put the money with the medicine because it's not gonna heal. You have to make the medicine from your heart. You have to love the medicine in order for you to make the medicine and heal the people. So that's what my grandmother teach me. So I can see and I can feel the person when they need the medicine. Because uh, before I do the medicine, I have to see the person. I cannot do the medicine without seeing the person. Because I can tell the person when she's very sick. Because the medicine that I'm doing, it depends how sick you are and how painful you are. Because if you're suffering very painful, I can make the medicine much stronger and you're much fast to heal. So that's why that I need to see you before make the medicine. And one thing here when, because I'm here already one year since I came from the state. <clears throat> I came back here because I was uh, <clears throat> going with uh, Jita, the so auntie, teaching the apprentice here in Guam. And um, I hope that I will be doing that you know, teaching because uh, we've been approved already for the grant but we haven't received yet the building that they promised us. So this is what I'm seeing here in Guam, that the Guam need a facility and a land to plan the medicine. So the apprentice will learn the medicine and to see how the medicine look like because it's a lot of medicine that it's look alike. And you need to identify which is the medicinal plan that is very important. Because making the medicine, you have to know the medicine. You have to learn to identify the medicine, which is the medicinal plan. And that's why that the apprentice has to see and learn to plan the medicine. That's what uh, here in Guam, 
really need a place to plant the medicine. I've been up now, I'm planting medicine at my house in the Santa Rita. I have a lot of seed of the medicine because I going around here in Guam looking for medicine. Sometimes I cannot find. So I have to call Rhoda, my daughter, to bring, to send medicine. In that way, I'm making medicine and I put it in the freezer of the medicine. And if I need it, I take it out from the freezer and I wash it for you. So because some medicine you need to boil, you, some medicine you need to pound it, some medicine you need to squeeze. It depends on what illness you have and the process of the medicine. Because not all medicine are the same process. It's different process because it's different illness. That's how that I'm treating the person that needs the medicine. So I hope that before the end of the year, we'll have the building and the land so we can start the apprentices because there is a lot of apprentices who wants to learn about the medicine. And this is one of our culture that we have to learn our medicine. And we have to proud because that is from our ancestors. And it's especially from your grandmother, your great grandmother, and pass that down to you. That is very important. And we have to be proud of ourselves. We have to proud that we're tomorrow. We have our culture, our medicine. So <clears throat> I hope that the governor will <clears throat> give us sooner the, our funds so we can start because we have been approved already, but we don't have yet. We don't get the facility and we don't get the funds. So that's why we still uh, idle, but we still <clears throat> are giving services to the person that needed. And like today, after the car, uh, workshop here, I have to pick medicine and start again because I have four people that need medicine. So before I um, end my conversation, I would like uh, to give thanks for this uh, social worker that um, <clears throat> give us the time to talk and uh, to say about our cultures and our medicine, because this is very important for us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Auntie Lou. We have quite a few questions for you in the chat. So we'll start with the first one. Why is culture important in identity and healing? The culture, it's very important and our identity. Because us tomorrow, we have to stand and we have to show them that we have culture and we have to be proud of our culture because our culture is very important. We got a lot of things from the food, the medicine, the clothing, everything we have. So the language, especially the language, because now you can see that the language were dying. So what now? We have to speak the language. You see, Spanish, Espanol, they talk their language. Filipino, they talk their language. Now us tomorrow, 
hafwa na pisinya para tasangan ilingwa ita. Tafan ba ni doso na ilingwa ita. Zani kuturafta ining kanota. Sana takilo irespeto. Ki amaldita na chamoro. Chamoro were very respectful. So that's why that it, we have to be proud of ourselves. Amen. Thank you for that, Antilu. The next one we have, our next question, what kind of issues are most common to treat that you see? The issue that uh, always um, I encounter because you know a lot of people they talking about their you know, problem so <clears throat> what we can give them we can give them advice because like you know the counseling we can give them medicine we can give them the respect and the love because the respect and the love, that's why that is really important. Because with our respect and the love, that is affecting our body and the whole from the head to the bottom to the feet. That is really affecting ourselves. Thank you for that, Antilu. We also have a question about how do you as a healer deal with feeling overwhelmed with the work and guest issues, guest or client issues? For me, if I making the medicine, before I make the medicine or before I meet the, per the person, I already every day I prepare myself to deal with anything that comes to me. And I have to uh, accept and I have to love and I have to respect because you can feel the person when uh, it comes to you and asking for help. So that, that's why that it's really important that to me. Thank you for that. Another question related to culture. What is important to remember about the Chamorro culture that is a strength for us? I, I want to say that we have been disconnected with our traditional upbringing uh, uh, because of invasion. Um, Spaniard, then came the Japanese, and um, now we are, we have and are blessed with different nationalities here, different, different, uh, culture. from different cultures uh, yeah. from all over the world. I, I myself want to ask people to help get along. We don't have to like each other, just get along so we can help the people that really need our help. People that get sick, they don't, they don't take the time to, to say, oh, I'm gonna go get sick. It, so a lot of times it's build up and sometimes life happens. We really just don't know until it hits us, you know, right between the eyes. We just have to learn how to meditate yeah. Yeah. and and get grounded, so that way we can help ourselves before we attend to people that need our help. Thank you so much, both of you, for that. We're going to actually move on to Mr. Donald Mendiola of Saipan, and we'll bring you all back together for our final discussion at the end with all three panelists. Thank you again.
and introducing Donald Mendiola. Buenas, I'm going Good morning. I'm going to be going back and forth no, tomorrow in English. Well, see Donald Benedetti Mendiola. Uh, I'm a Joe Abdi. Uh, I have joined the Joe Abdi group in Guam under the um, Father Foundation. Um, I've been a healer. I've been uh, practicing healing for 49 years. Uh, unlike uh, Miss Lou, where she was told by her grandmother to, to learn and to, to practice the medicine for compassion and blah, blah, blah. I, when I was about eight, almost eight and a half years old when I was young, and I used to see my grandmother, two maternal grandmothers preparing medicine. And of course, their siblings and all the great aunts and uncles. And I was just surrounded by a bunch of two aunties, a lot of healers. And at about that age, before I was like eight and a half years old, I got this interest. I felt like I was interested in learning to make medicine because I wanted to help people. I, I always hung around with the Manapu since I was a kid. I never hung around with my age group because I found them boring. I like to learn more. So they, the, the Manapu would be like, and I was like, okay, but can't you guys just teach me? Teach me stuff? Anyways, um, when I was about that age, I was eight and a half years old, I went to my grandmother, my paternal grandmother, and talked to her, and I spoke to her, and I said, Nana, will you please teach me what you know about medicine? She looked at me and like, why are you interested? I said, I want to help people. I want to do the same things that you're doing. I want to learn to uh, to heal people. And then she looked at me, and for some reason, maybe she felt that I was authentic with my feelings and my interests. So uh, she said, "Okay, follow me for now." So at that age, I started going to her house every day, and that started out during the summer after school was out. I was only in elementary, and I started learning the names of the plants. She started giving me the ingredients. And along the same line, because she, would, she was teaching me off and on, alternating days. Monday would be teaching about medicine. And then I was also interested in weaving. I wanted to learn to weave Costa Tenguang, Wafa, Malakbak, Tuhung, and all those fun stuff made from the pandanus. So I was killing two birds with one stone, and I didn't even know it was just because of my interest in learning to be, to, to, to continue on with the culture, to learn the culture. And to practice it, I wanted to learn how to weave bat, bat, bags and mats and hats as well, and different types of uh, other like black bag and stuff. And I was learning the medicine. And when I was about right before nine years old, uh, they were going like, you already know more than we do. And they would just, would just be laughing. Um, but yeah, I, I started feeding full plates. Uh, I'm empty, so empty when I was about right before nine years old. And the, my first client, first patient, was a baby that was like uh, almost one year old and started teething. And everybody knew me, I memorized the, the ingredients from my uh, lab, cold sores and teething. So I made the medicine. And lo and behold, after Ungu not, after one piece of the medicine, he put it in the mouth. That child was cured. And so as I was growing up, I, um, I noticed that a lot of the Zoampi, Imanamkusya, they would call me and usually like a month before they pass on and they would talk to me and they would give me their knowledge. They would teach me. And no less than 30 Manamku have taught me their, their, their ingredients. They passed on their knowledge and their abilities to me. And not only the tomorrows, of course, I've had the Carolinas, I've allowed to kiss Ponte and Yapi, so Manamku have taught me their type of medicine too. So it's not just pounding, squeezing, um, boiling. The, it's not only herbal. They started teaching me also some um, spiritual healing. So when I was 12 years old, uh, that's when I started learning to, to spiritually heal people. Some people get to the Maipi from the Totomona. They would go in the jungle and they would come out with swollen mouths and stuff. And, and I started practicing, I started doing it. And I became a spiritual healer uh, at a very young age. The Manamku told me that uh, I shouldn't be practicing it early because it's going to age me fast. I said, I don't care. I want to help people who are sick, so I'm going to do it anyways. So I did. And uh, I've been doing it for, for a long time now. 
Um, but mostly now, the type of feeding that I, I do is mostly, I, I still do the, the, the um, natural pounding and uh, boiling medicine, and feeding San Antonio, and all different types. Um, I still do those, but most of my my uh, patients are, are usually uh, tenu maipi, and I have uh, kind of like evolved to a different level of healing where even a natural illness can be healed spiritually. And how it's done is you heal the spirit of the person, which is what the social workers are doing right now. This is what you're doing. Thank you for helping. Um, but my, my, my type of healing it comes directly from the heart. It's total compassion. Um, you have to be caring. When I was younger, I learned to become uh, like a, almost, I guess I, I was gifted as being an empath. I could feel the pain. I could feel the illness when I was pounding and boiling medicine. So when people came, when, even before I was 20 years old, I could sense the illness. They could come near me and I could sense what they were suffering from. Uh, and, you know, not to mention like the physical external types of a uh, of uh, symptoms where you see like rashes and stuff. Well, that's obvious. But sometimes they would be, when as soon as they come here, come close to me, I would sense like something's wrong with the kidney. So I say, if you have a kidney infection, so I'm gonna need to do this and do that. And then sometimes they would come even after going to the hospital without telling me what they, they were suffering from. I would tell them because I felt like a sharp pain somewhere within my own body. And that would indicate to me where the pain is. And I would tell them. And they go, how did you know that? I go, I sort of felt it. Uh, and they go, how did you do that? Uh, how, did you, how did you get that gift? I, go, I don't know, but it's a gift, I guess, because I'm so into helping that I was gifted from above that ability to sense it. And so that helped me become a better, uh, so I'm the better healer and to be, so I didn't have to waste my time. Um, what are the types of uh, um, illnesses that I, I um, heal? I find them to be very seasonal. There will be a whole month full of children who would be teething or, or manamku. They would, they would start having like neck, neck pains, uh, headaches, and heat on their chest, or they would have mangdu maipi, so there's gas inside the body and traveling around. So I have to uh, boil the medicine, make them drink it. But I find it to be seasonal. In certain times of the year, I would have certain types of people with different, with this sort of very similar type of, uh, of, of illness or, or suffering that they're going through that would come. So let's say, for example, I, I also do a lot of uh, counseling, but I don't really say anything per se. They tend to, I make them talk and then I repeat, I give them back what they tell me and I tend to make them hear what they're saying. And then after a short, session of like talk and listen um they say uh, i feel relieved i go awesome so you actually didn't need any help you just needed somebody to listen to you and they go maybe it's because you're a spiritual healer so you're listening and then i go yeah well i pray while you're talking i'm praying in my heart asking the great divine to grant you the healing that you need and so forth um for those many many years of healing um i've been very satisfied, not the, for the fact that I get paid because I don't get paid. I do it out of my heart. I do it all the time. Um, but when, when people are happy and are generous and would like to contribute, like you give me pugwa, of course, or um, maybe raw meat or they make frittata, they bring me some, those I accept. I know it really comes from the heart, but I don't expect, there's no expectation on my part. But the thing about being a healer, when you see somebody suffering, you don't offer yourself because it's not, that's not how it goes. If somebody is sick, they have to ask you. And you don't advertise because we go by word of mouth. So everywhere I go, people know that I've been because I've, I've been healed people from the northernmost part of Saipan to the southernmost part of the island. Uh, I've been healing people in Tinian. I have done so many, I had so many, many hundreds of, of, of patients from Guam and Rhoda and continental United States of America. At the present moment, because of the, the pandemic, I cannot easily or readily 
leave the island to go attend to people off island. However, I've I've experimented and it worked using the phone. I make uh, we make a video uh, calls on Messenger or on WhatsApp, and I've done something, and I've been successful. And I'm just praying and praying many more, asking asking the Father to to grant me the ability so that I can help as many people as I can who need the help. And the satisfaction I get out of it is just knowing that one other one person has gotten better. And I try I try to lead them to become more spiritual in their lives. I tell them, you know, all you gotta do is just be honest. You have to live a good life. Clean yourself. Be who you want to be, but do it in the right way. Okay. Um, I guess the, the best way for me to, to conduct this other than just myself speaking, uh, I've done it so many times in the past, uh, even with the dementia group, the support group, I would speak, but there would be questions. I would need questions more to speak on because my mouth is just going to go a muck. You know, I have to speak about the many different things that I've done, and I don't like to do that because I'm a very humble person. I try to be modest. And because everything that I attribute to my healing is not from me. I'm always conscious of it. And I'm aware that all the healing that I've done comes from God. And it's not me personally because we're all the same. Okay? So um, I guess that's enough for now until there are questions that I may respond to. Thanks, Senor. We actually have quite a few questions for you. Okay. I can start with this first one. Sure. How do you manage the energies that you absorb from your clients? What advice do you have for, for social workers as we work with wounded souls? Oh, wow. Um, here's the thing. I was told that I, I, I need to be able to protect myself from all negative energy. So I've, I've done a lot of uh, divine contemplation of God and prayers and just asking for the strength and giving me the ability to be able to forego that negative energy so that I don't be crippled in my healing process. So what happened is I, I thank God for giving me this ability to protect myself. And so if there's a negative energy coming my way, it just tends to just go like in a parabola, it just goes, turns around and just leaves me and I don't get affected by it. But for the social workers, what's very important that I may say, if, if you may please allow it, is to give you give yourself some time to to recharge, like have a glass of wine, go talk to your, your coworkers, your friends, and just kick back. Maybe go by the beach, or maybe have a swim. Go out to dinner and just not talk about work or anything, but talk about what you're going through. Maybe like uh, your 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 intentions of um, uh, improving your lives, or just things that are positive. And so as you, you start in getting involved in positive absorption of the energy, then all those negative things that you absorb, you tend to start departing without even your, your, your knowledge or your, your aware of it going away. Then you start feeling better. It's because you are building up positive energy within yourselves. Because you guys, all social workers, since they work socially out there helping people, it's very important that they recharge their own positive energy. And that would be the protection and everybody is capable of doing that just believe that you are able to do so and because you're all very empathetic not just sympathetic of people who are suffering with the empathy empathy is a spiritual power and it's a gift and it's given to all social workers whether you like it or not whether you're aware of it or not but you don't get into a field without a divine guidance and you being in your position you have been inspired and been brought into that position through the divine guidance of God himself. So you have the power to do that. Just remember that you do and you have that guidance and always be open in your heart to accept it, receive it, and apply it. Okay? Thank Anything you for else? That, Senor. Yes, we have quite a few questions for you. Okay. Our next one is, how do we cultivate our intuition as social workers regarding empathy? Oh, okay. Um, that's, yeah. How do you cultivate it? Um, myself, I found myself being able to cultivate all this positive energy by prayer. Um, maybe you call it maybe meditation, maybe just walking out there in the beach or just 
walking the jungle looking for medicine or trying to get a nonas right bananas right by uh to lover's point or just hanging out with uh, with your family that's how you cultivate that because there's love within the, the the gathering of family right and love is the most powerful of all forces and once you start cultivating love in your heart and your mind everything you do comes out of compassion and it's very very motivating for other people and so when you have love in your heart and you're, you're cultivating it it's very contagious so whomever you come across will feel that uh, positive energy coming out of you as well as of course your clients that you need to to work with and help them it, ma it makes the process of healing a whole lot easier when you are being aware of your abilities and you're aware of the energy you're working with and when you got to be honest all the time not, not just being there for the money but you're there because you're very compassionate you're loving okay. thank you Finya. we have another question how do you let go of clients uh, clients illness or pain that you might get vicariously uh I, like i was mentioning earlier i've been given that gift from above to not be a sponge for that uh, i am able now to to heal people without absorbing the negative energy or if i were to absorb it then probably very temporarily let's say five minutes and then just leaves me because what i do is i focus more on the healing of the person i'm not focusing on my protection because god will take care of that because what i'm doing is i'm trying to glorify god in what i do so god won't permit me to get sick in the process because i'm doing what he wants me to do okay thank you i have another question ten donald what overlap have you learned exists across the different um, from the different cultural groups how is the knowledge kept in each group and are there any contradictions um herbal medicine is just herbal medicine it's just that uh, recipes or ingredients being used in recipes are different from different cultures and whatever whichever um, recipe is readily available for me to utilize at the moment when i need to to prepare a concoction or a brew then i would use that okay like for example uh, i would makpong i would makpong for children right there are seven different types so whatever type Whichever recipe I need, which is the quickest for me to grab the medicine from and make it, and it will come effective, then that is that I choose whichever recipe that it will work at that moment, which is readily available. So I don't go crazy driving around so much around the island. But there are some ingredients that are tomorrow medicine that we really are lacking in Saipan. I have to go to Rhoda or I have to have some people, relatives in Rhoda, send them through the mail or rather or, or on the plane. Um, things like tupun ajuzu, agahga, put put put, those and sometimes kamang uh, tasi. These four types of uh, tomorrow or herbs uh, we are lacking here in Saipan. So I had tend to get them from from Rhoda, but for the rest, I I, I really find them around the house and in places where I know where they're at. So as a healer, zomti, uh, you have to know where the plants are, and there are some plants that. I may not be, it's not good to remove from their native uh, habitat because they may be not be as effective as it is as they would be if they're there. I applaud Simamalu, my cousin, Simamalu, yeah, she's great, great cousins. Um, I applaud her because she's awesome. And she, she started the first garden in Rhoda when she was a resident director. And she came up with that idea to, to start a garden and they actually have it now in Rhoda. But that was her idea with uh, another relative mayor, Mayor uh, Joe Inos, I think, right? And they started that program. And they have it in Rhoda, so sometimes when I go to Rhoda, I just go straight to the garden, and I would get put, put, put there, just to put an azuzu, just a kang kang, and stuff like that. Okay, so going back to uh, contradicting the, the different types of knowledge, um, sometimes I have to use my knowledge of Palawan medicine, Sometimes I have to use the chicken medicine, the corner pen, the tumor medicine. There's so many that I know, and I only use them to help people with uh, because they are very positive medicine. Uh, um, medicine. 
And that's why when I was learning from the different Manapu in the different cultures, they told me that it's not bad to learn what they want to show me, want to teach me, because I may need it later on. I said, okay, sure. And I was always open when I was learning. So I said, okay, I'll learn it. And I'm, I've been told that I had a, a photographic memory when I was a little kid. So I'm pretty good with memorizing. And so, um, I, and then I wrote things down, but then that's just so I can transfer the knowledge to my nieces and nephews. But um, there's really no negative uh, interactions between the knowledge and the use of medicines from the different cultures. It's just that I tend to utilize whichever is the easiest, the quickest, and probably the, the, the least ingredient requiring a recipe so that I could help people. But it boils all down in the end. It's just trying to help the person. And I find them to be all effective because I've learned from very authentic healers from those different cultures as well. I don't know why they saw well, what they saw in me that, that indicated to them that they should pass it on to me because their family members don't want to learn it and they, they felt like they shouldn't uh, lose or take their knowledge with them, but to leave it here so that somebody can use it. And I fortunately humbly thank them for, for teaching me and I'm using them and I'll be healing up until the, to my last breath. Okay. Thank you, Sanghat. We do have a question. Um, do you ever turn to other Zoomte for support? I haven't, but I am in a group, uh, in, the, in, in the group where here in Saipan, um, I, maybe it's not very nice to say this, but I'm usually the person that the Zoomte in Saipan come to for healing when they are suffering from, uh, especially spiritually, especially when they absorb the negative energy and they get sick. Uh, they, they come to me for that and I, I cooperate and I help them because we're, we help each other. And sometimes they do sometimes go to their places where maybe some ingredients are needed in my recipe that I would obtain from them so I don't have to go all the way in the jungle to get it. Especially the Amutumaga, I mean, I'm no, I'm, I'm on, what's that? Tumatisaka, because I rarely have it at home. As soon as I get them growing, I use it when somebody needs it. So, yeah, we, we, we have a very good working relationship. Um, very caring. And all the empties are, are, are connected spiritually, whether they know it or not, but they know, actually they should know. That we're all related, that we're all very connected because we all share the same healing energy that has been given to us. Because you need to be gifted this from above. It has to be a gift for you to do it. Otherwise, you because you have to be very strong hearted, okay? You have to be open, you have to be able to tolerate uh, anxiety, you have to be able to tolerate uh, anger. You try not to be angry, by the way. Uh, tolerate people uh, saying bad things to bad talk to you, trying to say like, um, this person is ineffective or blah, blah, blah. What do they know? Dr. Frog this, Dr. Frog that. And I've heard that about me and then I just smile. I go, I never claim to be a doctor, but I, I claim to try to help you. So that's what I do. I never said I'm a doctor, but I never got a degree from from, from, from a university. I was never licensed there, but I've been licensed here in my islands by the culture and by those who were who are predecessors of mine and um, the, 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 the proof is uh, you look at the, the product or the, the end healing that I've done. Not a single one has come back and said, you did bad. I've always been so thank you, thank you. And I don't attribute it to me. I always attribute it back to God. We always give God thanks because God is the source of all healing, all everything, everything good comes from God. Any more questions? Now we actually do have a couple of questions. Okay. In regard to burnout, how is Amate so resilient with love? Um, by, because we understand that we, we are physical as well as spiritual, that when the, the part of us, the physical part starts getting burnt out, we, we know how to just go on a break. Not necessarily a whole week or whatever, but we can stop for a little while and say, okay, I need an hour. I need an hour to recuperate, so we just become spiritual, and so we recharge spiritually, 
by just saying our, our Father and say, Lord, grace me with whatever is necessary that I may continue to do your will. It's necessary because my body is trying to give up. Then before you know it, like you're rejuvenated, you're fine. I'm pretty good with that because um, I tend to complain. I go, you want me to do this? So you have to help me too. Then I will be okay again. You have to have a good relationship with our source. You have to love. And the thing about also the healing thing is we have to have the constant reminder and we have to have an attitude of us, not you and I. We have to have the concept and the belief and practice and, and inborn, put it way deep inside into our inner being and always have that us attitude so that we can help each other. That way, you always have the source with you because you're loving your best. Right? Thanks, Sonia. We're going to go have and bring back our other two panelists now, and we'll go ahead and open it for a larger moderated discussion with all three of you. So I have a couple of questions that have come through the chat um, that I believe they, they want to ask all of you. So we'll go ahead and ask those questions now. And we'll go ahead and answer them in the order of your presentation. So first with Sina Susan, then Sina Lu, then Senor with you, okay? So our first question is, where do you feel the power to help others comes from? And we'll start with you, Sina Susan. The power that comes within is through God above our being. And um, finding the time to acknowledge the now, never take things personal. You know what that is? Everything. <laughs> you just have to learn how to do the breathing so you can release the energy, the negative energy that has on cast on you <laughs> and wants to go <clears throat> deeper into depth <clears throat> inside. Uh, in order for you to release that, take a moment, like uh, Senor said, and just meditate. Learn to release that negative energy so that way the, the good flow of energy will come within. Automatic. And depending on how bad you really want it, it'll be fast, very fast, very, very fast. <laughs> or sonar, <laughs> fiber optic, it's amazing, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, I mentioned it before, it's just inner, so because your heart is the throne of God, your heart is where the church is, church in heaven is right in your heart, and all you gotta do is just make sure it's always clean, and you're always there, uh, and always taking from that source because that fountain is never going to empty up. And that's where you find your strength. Right, Sister Lu? Yes, yes. it's really right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we all know that you are different healers from different regions. And so we do have a question about that. Is there any difference in the practice from the different regions, Rhoda, Guahan, Saipan? And have there been any changes in the practices over the years? Hmm. No, we, I don't actually share yeah. our knowledge to when it is uh, um, needed. Yeah. With, you know, and then we reach out to people that we can, the other zoanthes. That's why that is very important that uh, we have to communicate and uh, we have to make a group uh, conferences so we can build up our you know, culture and especially our medicine, that is very important. Knowledge. Yeah, and our knowledge, what is we have to input and what is that uh, we need to do more for the community, especially for us. Share and do yeah. a team play. A teamwork. Teamwork. Mm -hmm. Yep, no difference at all. We treat the yeah. same kind of illnesses. We use the same kinds of plants. Um, we treat them just all the same, especially the um, herbal plants and even the spiritual. It's all one. Everything is just one. Just it like healing. Right? 
just uh, might be a little different how we prepare it, uh, but basic. It's mm -hmm. it's it's just the ingredients that uh, I uh, know seen here because the the tomatoes. I just noticed that uh, guam and uh, roda siphon and roda. It's just the same tomatoes. But uh, when I was here in Guam, I learned that the tomatito is that is the <laughs> tomatista. Yeah, yeah tomatito. That is the difference of the ingredients of the medicine. So that's why that uh, it's only that. But that it's very important that the I was uh, mentioning uh, that no, it's mm -hmm. the, the demonstration and uh, the. <clears throat> To, to know what is the medicinal plant is. I know that uh, the tomatito is the medicinal tool, but it's the nutrients of that is lower than the tomatistaka. Because when I went to the States and uh, I find out, because we sit down with the botanists and uh, we uh, come up with that. So that is the difference. But they use that here because uh, that is how they said that it's tomatoes chakra. But yeah. as you can see, that the, the description of that tomatoes chakra is different because the tomatoes chakra from Saipan and Roda it's round. Tomatito it's a little bit malabla. Uh, malabla, yeah. yeah. And the the the, the tree and the, you know the it grow the tomatito it grow like four <laughs> feet. Hi, the tomati, tomatistaka, it's sure. uh, spread uh, 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 around and it's low. So that is the difference. And those uh, tomatistaka is very important in the medicine ingredients. Yeah. For it, even uh, for any, med, uh, you have a yeah. uh, sore, you can just pound that and uh, you, you put okay. it, mm -hmm. it, it really helps you. That that is the Which one is here that I find out. Mm -hmm. Or sore mouth is the number one. Yeah. Yeah. Even it's antibiotic. Yeah, or, or sore throat, yeah. even yeah. sore throat or yeah. Tonsillitis. You can just yeah. chew that, swallow the juice, and you'll be fine. Yeah. Five minutes, you'll be good. Right. That is better than the antibiotic because oh. right. it takes ten like days, <laughs> two or three days to yeah. Get healed, but that to my saka and I proved that yes, minutes, I have yeah. a lot of patient here, uh, people that need it. Okay. Thank you for sharing. The next question we have is, what got you into being a Chamorro educator and practitioner, and why is culture important in identity and healing, and where did you learn your medicine from? I was inspired by my mother and as a little kid, I had this feeling that this is my destiny and um, my passion actually to help people in their ailing. Um, and also my, my clan of seven generations, I'm the eighth generation of the uh, Tenorios and uh, the Sufiano is uh, uh, has been known for their healing uh, properties. I spoke on that already uh, when I said that I was interested in blah, blah, blah. Um, maybe I should not to respond to it because it's extending the time. And Lou also spoke on that with uh, the, her experience with the grandmother. Yes. So, and, uh, I'm, the, I'm the Chamorro educator here. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm a teacher. I've been teaching since 1988 and I do incorporate Chamorro medicine into the curriculum. That's I what we all, did. Yeah. Here. I spent almost a whole month taking the kids around, um, showing them the plants, um, telling them, I mean, talking about the plants, telling them what they're used for. Um, I would make sometimes uh, samples. I can make them drinks like I'm a fresh cook, I'm a mukbang, I make the kids try it. And then I make them do a show and tell. And then I make them also, if they're from different cultures, I have them bring in like five different types of medicinal plants and they explain it to the class. And so that's in, in my tomorrow 
uh, okay. culture, tomorrow language and culture class, which is bilingual. Um, that's one of the assignments that we give the students at the towards the end of the, the school year during the fourth quarter, which is starting this quarter. We'll be doing a lot of global, I mean, a, a lot of uh, cultural and medicinal uh, lessons with the students in the middle school level. In, um, for me in Rhoda, why that I'm really uh, interested in, uh, in uh, to be at a Zoampi to learn about the medicine because, uh, you know, Rhoda is a small island and um, on that uh, back then we don't have doctor. We always, uh, they always send the patient to Saipan. So in that way, I practice, uh, continue to practice my uh, grandmother teaching. So I make a lot of medicine and uh, my, my kids, they mm -hmm. never go to the hospital. Um, and I got to really know when I bring them to the States because they don't have a uh, shot because Shortcut. they don't have uh, no, a record in the hospital because uh, I didn't uh, finish them because I just do the medicine uh, from me and uh, I treat them. So when I bring them to the States, uh, they, don't, they ask me for the shot card and I don't have because uh, they don't have record for that. So I, when Rhoda don't have enough doctor, so that's how the that, you know, medicine, uh, women's and you know, my uh, grandmother and all those people that know how to make the medicine, they you know, practice the medicine and uh, they you know, most they do the medicine, they're drinking because uh, nothing, then the hospital is too small, not enough, not even medicine. So maybe Donald can just see that group of people, they always send it to Saipan for treatment. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah that's true. And a lot of times, especially with those who are gonna give birth me to deliver, um, I've experienced many, many times, especially her sister, uh, first cousin, no, her sister, see Andrea. Yeah, she was she was working with the uh, Rota liaison. Yes. Every time they brought women who are gonna be, be given the C-section, she would stop over at my house. I'm very close to her. She would bring them, and uh, you know they'd be breached, so they're supposed to get a C-section. So when they come, she goes, "I have a brother. Can you help?" And like, well, let me try. Uh, I can't guarantee, but let me give it a shot. So what I do, I just you know on the surface of the, the the stomach, I do a thing. I do a spiritual thing and. Uh, so I just massage very lightly and I talk to the baby and say, you know, you got to be good and your mom is suffering and you shouldn't give her a hard time. You shouldn't have a hard time yourself. And I tell them, okay, the baby should listen. And I tell them, you're going to, let's say that they're scheduled to have a C-section on a Monday. And when I, mean, I talk to the baby, I say, okay, you got to do this on Saturday. They come on Friday. Go, you got to come out tomorrow. So lo and behold, she gets <laughs> taken into the hospital. She gives the mother gives birth on Saturday. And then the doctor will be like, What? I thought I scheduled you for Monday. He's like, yeah, but my baby decided to, to straighten up and came out. So <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so many times like that. Uh Mama Lou, Lou knows because her sister was the one who was bringing them in. Oh my gosh, like at least two, <laughs> two, two, two pregnant women coming to Saipan for this issue, but they always stop at my house first. Mm -hmm. And even one of the drum team wrote us to Mariano. She was a bit of a Every daughter also was going to go to the same thing as she came over. One of the drum teams uh, came over to my house with uh, Andrea. And then the, she brought them over. And I go, So, what can you help me with? I go, Wait, you know how to make medicine? She goes, Yeah, but I don't know how to. I said, Let me try. See, the thing about it is when you humble yourself, you are given that ability even more. So. I never say, I'm going to do it. I can do it. I'm not it. Let's pray and let's hope that I can help you with this. But it's not my, my, my ability to let this happen. But hopefully the Lord will be uh, merciful enough to, to grant this uh, healing. Because, you know, to be cut is really bad. So uh, let's say out of 20, maybe 18 of them, just, they gave birth naturally, even when they were scheduled for six section. So it's good enough. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I never attribute any of it to me. It's not <laughs> just my palm. Mm -hmm. from above. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> I do have one last question for you all before we do uh, move to our closing remarks. But how do you handle when you know that individual's physical ailment is really their emotional ill health? 
I, 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 I tell them. I tell them. I would tell them that, okay, the reason why you're suffering this way is because you're stressing. You're overthinking about something. And then they go, so oh, can you help me? I go, now that you have admitted it, I'm going to suffer you. So we're going to suffer. So that's right. when they need the suffering. It's spiritual eating. And that's good. Um, we cannot be very, um, what's going on? Uh, compassionate in our feelings when it comes to telling them why they're suffering. We have to be honest, but we have to say it in a way that we don't hurt them, make them feel like they're cuckoo. We tell them that, you know, we understand, blah, blah, blah. but then this is the reason why. So if you want me to help you, I'm going to have to do it this way. And then they would usually, of course, they would say, okay, by all means, please try. So when we do it, we, we end up healing the spirit. Because once they, the spirit is filled, then the rest of the being, which is the body, is sealed after that. Because you have to, the, the prior, a prior, right, is the spirit, and then the physical comes after that. Okay? That's, that's, at least that's how I see it and how I believe in that form of healing. Yeah. Uh, for me, I don't do safi because I don't know the safi, but... Um, I'm just uh, helping them, uh, doing, uh, giving them uh, the medicine. So what medicine that I most, uh, and then when it comes to me, the most I give, I give them like Amutabadijo, because that Amutabadijo is a complete Amutabadijo, the uh, Amutfresco, and you combine with those, uh, the uh, mighty, and then when you make that, a lot of people that if they drink that, those, it's just like, you know, when you drink, it's just like gone, everything is stressed. Right, right. Yeah, so I don't I don't know the safi, but that is the medicine that uh, yeah, my uses mother, it. yeah. So that's yeah. what I give. Uh, I help them like that. Um, for myself, I, um, I, I came up with my tea, in IT, then it said on my tea. Said on my tea, you know, it's a spiritual healing. In my tea, my tea, my tea, how on Suli in Minaik Tau Tau, you take in their negative energy. Minaik tea is you cannot help the negative energy that is coming from our phone, the heat, the UV rays that's in the air, and the sun. Those are things that we need to, to recognize in the person, our guests, that we are trying to help. If they are willing to be honest with us, and tell us what they are really suffering. Because sometimes what they are telling us is really not what's wrong with them. It's deeper than, than it is that, that, we, that they're seeing. And, and sometimes they cannot even can't even tell you what it is. Um, the special gifts that we have brings that out on us. And um, like I said, prayer before we meet the person, and then when we start to uh, get healing to the person, we we still pray throughout. And then thank also your being for having to uh, incorporate and to their, their, their help, so what they're needing from themselves as well as you. Once again, thank you all for being part of our panel entitled Tomorrow Healing Practices. Um, where it looks like we're just about at the end of our time for our panel. Um, so I'll go ahead and open up the floor for you three to leave us with any parting words. Kung dog ko na si Juice Maxi ni on Fabre si Tori sa maguon na Tori Tao Tao ni man Daniel giling e Garcia at si Don Madidania and si Nagade si Hamzu ni counselors sa anti Hamzu si Sina Hamloki in sen sen adjuda itao Tao ni man gof man maan yung then and what I'm trying to say is that I'm so grateful and thankful to all the counselors that have gotten this uh,
together so we can be aired out to the public to let them know also that we are human and when you need help you're willing to really do it you do it from here let us help you let us do our best to help you so don't be afraid okay um thank you on behalf of myself and uh other i i would like to say thank you for giving me us this opportunity to be able to share and to clarify maybe and, and give you information as to what we do as we work in tandem with the counselors helping our people as we love them so much and you're called to do that and so you are in it we're called to do the healing too so we're in it we're all together in this uh, venture of trying to better our people try to bring back uh what is was almost lost and practicing it and helping others this is just massive for me <clears throat> thank you very much <laughs> For all of you, please, uh, Dr. Walker, thank you very much. And uh, what I'm really hoping, uh, maybe that UOD will help us uh, with um, our funds that we've been uh, approved already. And all we are waiting is just the funds that it's going to be in, uh, in our account because we have the facility already, but they don't do anything because they haven't uh, started yet because they said that the funds is not there. So I hope uh, that uh, if we can pull some of uh, the string from all of the uh, social worker to uh, you know, help each other so we can have the facility and we give services to the whole community yeah so more people will benefit from that because us as a healer we're ready and we're just waiting and maybe my brother dano can come and join us here next i year. will i will so, yeah with the facility that yes. if we grant open now maybe we can call you and uh, I will come, I'll come. And, and oh. with the rest of the other healers. Yes. Yeah. Oh, before I forget, I would like to, I would like everybody to hear this, that I would like to give a very special thank you to Terry Francisco. Yes. She was the one who asked me this last week to, if I could join this panel, and I said, I would be willing to do it. She goes, thank you, Senor Lago. I will do anything for you and for the people. Okay. Thanks, Terry. Terry. Thank, thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Viva, viva Miss Chicago. Yes, viva Miss Chicago. Viva para todo el mundo. Viva social work. Thank you three again for being part of our panel entitled Tomorrow Healing Practices. Once again, as part of our panel, we had Susan Uggen, Lou Manglotnia, and Donald Mendiola. And of course, if you have any other comments or thoughts you'd like to share, please share them in the chat, and we can make sure that we share them to them later. Thank you three again for being part of our panel. See you with Masi. See you with Masi. Adios. 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 So we'll be starting our lunch a little bit early. We were originally scheduled for 11.30, but we're going to go ahead and kick off lunch now. We're going to be playing the proclamation signing for Social Work Month in just a bit. We know that there were some technical difficulties with our breakout sessions um, for yesterday for day one. Those technical issues should be taken care of today, but we will be opening the breakout sessions a little early as the agenda has the concurrent sessions happening right after lunch. Um, but until then, we're going to kick off lunch first uh, with the proclamation signing recording, then move into activities from our social work students, and our lunch will end at 12.30, which will lead into our concurrent sessions. We have four different breakout sessions, and that information is included in the agenda that was sent via email to you all this morning. We'll also share the agenda again in the chat. Once again, please feel free to stay with us for lunch for the proclamation signing. And then for, at 1130, we'll have the social work students activities. We'll see you then.